This new book from WFAN Afternoon Drive co-host Evan Roberts, The Mets Bible, <laughs> scoring 30 years of baseball fandom. Good buddy of ours. He joins us in studio. You got all dressed up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> is the first thing you're going to say? <laughs> right out of bed. I thought I was dressing up. Then I look at these guys. I'm like, uh, I'm a schlub. <laughs> uh, Evan, great to see you first and foremost. We'll get Thank into you. the Mets and the resurgence over the last uh, couple weeks. But let's talk a little bit about the book first and foremost. Father's Day just came and went, right? You know you score the games each and every day. What made you decide to put this book together? Because I finally realized it was actually Craig Carton's idea. I'll give him credit, my former partner. What are you doing with all these scorecards? You have scored all these games for years what are you gonna do with it so finally I was like let's publish it let's make it a thing so I picked the 81 most memorable games that doesn't mean good that means memorable and there's okay. a lot of bad mixed in <laughs> so I picked these games out I published the scorecards and I kind of told the story of what I was thinking at the time where I was in life some of these times I'm a kid sometimes I'm doing the shows with Beningo and so it was basically telling the story of my life through my Met fandom which really goes back to 92 because that's when I first scored a game for the first time I was nine eight years old well one of the games you talk about in the book is the Robinson Ventura walk-off Grand Slam single. Yes. I should say. Uh, you go to games with your dad. Talk yes. To, about that experience. Oh my God. That was the game where I actually shut my scorebook for the first time because it got <laughs> so rainy and my little cover that I had, my uh, towel I would put over my scorecard, was getting so soaked. I shut it as Robin Ventura came to the plate. Todd Pratt had just drawn a walk. And I said to my dad, I'm shutting the book. He's like, How can you shut the book? <laughs> Robin Ventura's coming up. And I said, Dad, I can promise you this. I'm going to remember what happens next, good or bad. <laughs> and then I'll never forget that ball exploding off his bat, yeah. knowing the game was over, obviously, and then just the hysteria that ensued. Like, it's not really a home run because he didn't round the bases. That was an incredible moment and certainly one of the games that needed to be in because if the Mets didn't win there and it went another inning, I was going to have to turn the page on my scorecard. Uh -oh. That's a very complicated yeah. process for you. I'm curious, is. how about the the, uh, the role of baseball and the father-son relationship, your dad being there? Obviously, you have kids now and being able to take those moments in with your dad. Oh, my dad taught me everything about baseball. He really did. He taught me all the good and the bad, the teams I root for, how awful they are. It's basically his fault. But growing up, I basically grew up at Shea Stadium with him and my sister would come for a while my mom would never come she didn't even like it but me and my dad would spend so many nights watching this baseball team and I wish we would have seen a championship <laughs> we still haven't uh -huh. can the Mets win us a championship yeah. so I can at least experience that with him and now my two sons but yeah, I mean, we grew up basically. I grew up watching the Mets with him basically every night. Yeah, another memorable moment, of course, in Mets history is Johan's no hitter. Oh. In quotation. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> what do you it mean? Wasn't in quotation? really a no hitter. <laughs> no, it's still, you Bell know, trying to rip the chalk down the left field line. Listen, let's be honest. You'll see it in this book. <laughs> I go on a tirade about this. This is why. This is quotation. a no hitter. <laughs> there are bad calls in sports. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. You're a Yankee fan. If you're a Yankee <laughs> fan out there. Love. Did Jeff? Jeffrey Mayer occur? It did occur. I agree with did you. Did Derek Jeter hit a home run or was it really a fly out? Uh, it was really a fly out. No. Tony Carrasco. <laughs> <laughs> it's a home run and the Yankees Rich won Garcia, the yeah. game one of the ALCS. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, it was controversial. I no, wish my dad right. was there. My dad was not there for that game. He missed it. Oh. And I was in a tough spot because he was on DVR and I was like calling him like, get live, get live, <laughs> get live. Why, son? I can't tell, can't you. tell you. Get live. But that was... <laughs> That was a moment, man. Awesome. What was, when was, the first game you ever scored was what? So I went back to the archives to find out. It was a regular season game against the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1992. Game winning home run, Barry Bonds. Barry, what made you decide to start? So I think my dad couldn't deal with me. I wasn't paying, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the game. Right. And yeah, I think yeah. he was at a crossroads Smart. like, I can't bring my son to these games anymore because my dad had a rule. We're staying for nine innings. Yeah. We're watching this game. And I think, he gave me a scorecard as a way to distract me. And it really taught me baseball. So scoring got me into baseball more than baseball got me into scoring. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, your dad was never won, my, because my dad would always be like, let's go beat the traffic at the GW Bridge. Crying. <laughs> your dad was never won. Bro, that's a crime. Yeah. <laughs> Even to this day, if I tell him we left early, my youngest Spence was crying. Yeah. He'll be like, you left early? Mm. So that is, that's a crime against uh, Robert's fandom. We don't leave early. All right, Evan, let's let's ask you a couple questions about what's going on with the Mets right now. Players only meeting. How big do you think that was the turning point to this Mets season? I mean, it's got to be grimace. How could you give credit to a players only <laughs> meeting when you had a purple blob throwing out the first pitch? 
hey, hey, hey. They're on the feet. Purple I know. <laughs> now, beyond that, how, maybe it was your beard. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe it was. You know, I shaved my beard after I said I would grow it until Pete Alonso got an extension. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's my You know what I think it was? I do think it was the players only meeting because J.D. Martinez said something. <laughs> yes. Kind of worries me a little bit, but he said it. The pressure's off, guys. Just relax. Everyone thinks we're terrible anyway. And they have played more relaxed. And they they've have. been really, really good. Now, the concern is the pressure is going to get back on because now the Mets are in a pennant race. So the expectations are going to kind of change again. But, yeah, I mean, that rock-bottom moment against the Dodgers was clearly – a line of demarcation. And since then, they've been a better team. They've been a fun team. And yeah. here we are, the hottest team in baseball. Do you think Pete Alonso is the Met next year? I do. I say that with confidence because I think the Mets are going to value Pete Alonso more than every other team is going to value Pete Alonso. I think we as fans love him. He's a homegrown Met. He hits a ton of home runs. But you see some of his advanced, advanced stats. They don't really grade him that well. Mm -hmm. And I think we are going to appreciate him more than say, the Houston Astros or the Chicago Cubs or whatever team tries to sign him. So I'm not worried about the offseason because I want to enjoy this, but I do have a belief that Pete's going to be a career Met because I think Steve Cohen also knows that matters to us. Do you believe in Cohen and Stearns? I, I mean, I do. Look, it hasn't been a great start for Steve no. Cohen, but here's the things that he does that I love. He loves our history, sure. which matters. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, the number 24 being retired is a big deal, and that's New York baseball history, and I'm glad he did it. And I'm Doc glad and Darryl this year. Doc and Darryl. Like, he appreciates Embracing the Embracing the Met history. No doubt. Instead of the Brooklyn Dodgers. And he, well, they're a part of our history, too. I understand, yes. But I think that he spends... He's trying to win. I think David Stearns is a smart guy. This was a tough year because this wasn't going to be the year in many eyes. But they're better than people gave them credit for. And the way they're playing right now is fun because I don't want to think about two years. I want to think about this year. All right, Mets Bible, putting the book together, anything that surprised you? You picked the most important, influential 81 dates that you scored, 81 games you scored. Yeah. Anything that hit you surprised you? It just reminded me how horrible the Mets have been to me and to all of us <laughs> as fans. That there have been so many just brutal losses to go through. But it also reminded me, wow, I've scored a lot of meaningless games. Yeah. You know, for the 81 that I picked, what about the 10,000 that are irrelevant Tuesday nights against the Marlins in May? Yeah. I've got a lot of those. Yeah, those happen. Uh, trust me, I was a part <laughs> of a lot of those. But one of the things I, I think as a fan, and you sit there and you root, what moment do you think or what date do you give a team by that you say, we don't have a chance? I always think we have a chance. This is a part of the sickness. So... <laughs> I will watch baseball seasons into July and August until it's mathematically over and say, maybe it turns around now. Right. Maybe, it, maybe we're the Nationals of 2019 or whatever example you want to use. So even though I'll talk about it on the radio or on a podcast and say, hey, we stink, we're not good, and I'll give you reasons, as a fan, I'm always hopeful. And I look back at some of those games from 2011 or 2002 where I'm like, oh, yeah, I was watching in July because I was hoping for things to turn around. And it's funny that in this season it's actually happened. Mm. But in most seasons it doesn't happen. You voice your own a book? That's right. How was that? That was something Now, you else. do radio. You've been doing radio <laughs> in New York for, I mean, 25 years. So it's been, different, though. But how is it voicing your own book and making sure you hit the right emphasis yeah. to, to bring about the emotion you were feeling at the time of writing it? It was surreal. I started getting emotional sometimes because you, you start really? to rekindle the memories of the games. But it was a good experience. I'm glad I did it. I, I advise this to any author. you got to voice your own book. When you write the book, Moose, <laughs> you better voice it. If you I'm don't gonna, voice it, I'm not going to read voice it. My, I will voice my own book when good. I write my own book. Good. Then now how long, how many takes did it take you to do, though? Uh, it took about, like, five days with, in three-hour sessions. So it probably took, like, 14, 15 hours 15 overall. 15 hours overall. So it was... It was a process, but when I'm glad I did it. Mets, uh, Jets open up the season, right? Are the Mets still a wild card contender week one of the NFL? Damn Rangers? right. No doubt. We're alive. It doesn't take much, bro. No, I They're know. a game under, two games under 500. That's They're in a race. His, yeah. That's why I bust his chops oh, about all, all the time. time. The National League is terrible. I know, you, don't have to, you don't actually have to be good to be in the pennant does race. Does it matter? No, it <laughs> doesn't matter. The, I understand. The yes. Diamondbacks. I saw the Diamondbacks and the Rangers, yes. So what's the problem? Thanks for getting dressed up. You look great. <laughs> ah, there it is again. Thanks. You look great. You look fantastic. Book is awesome. Uh, Mets Bible. Check it out. If you're a baseball fan, Mets fan, love father-son relationships, it's a tremendous read. Evan Roberts does a great job after the drive you. on WFAN. Ev, thanks for the time. Thanks for having me. I you appreciate it. <laughs>